What is the Salah of the Qur'an and why is it not a ritual prayer? Assalamu alaikum. Today we are going to look at the concept of the Salah in the Qur'an. Let me start with a very simple basic question. Anybody who has read the Qur'an knows that the Qur'an mentions no details about the ritual prayer that we today know and associate with the Qur'anic term as Salah. Why is that? In the same vein, let me ask a few more questions. Why are the so-called five prayers not mentioned by name? Why doesn't Allah even for once mention that we have to pray five times every day this Salah? Why doesn't Allah call this ritual prayer a pillar of Islam, despite what you and I might have heard since we were brought up? Because these ritual prayers have certain timings, how do those timings get calculated in Antarctica? What if one was in space or on Mars? The list of questions, and very logical questions at that, continues to go on and on and on. The more you think, the more of these absurdities and omissions we are bound to come up against. So let's return to the question that I posed from the beginning. If we are to assume that this ritual prayer that we have now got associated with the Quranic term Salah is indeed a pillar of Islam, then why did Allah forget and omit all of these details and conditions to make it truly universal? What really happened there? Or is there a really simple explanation that the Quranic Salah is not the ritual Salah that we follow know today? In this series called Salah in the Quran, we are going to talk about the Salah as it is in the Quran. I must preface this and the later discussions with a few disclaimers from my side. I understand that this is a very emotive topic for a lot of Muslims. I understand it. I get it. The purpose of this series and this video today is not to offend anybody, but to simply show what the verses of the Quran from Allah say about Salah. Now, no one objects to anyone who wants to do this ritual prayer of today. If you want to do it willingly, there's no problem with it. But we are going to restrain and constrain ourselves to Allah's words about this concept in the Quran. Now, whether that meets what a person does today or not is a different matter. Having said that, let's begin the series. The first question and the most important question is, what is the Salah? as it appears in the Qur'an. A very quick word on methodology. I, throughout the series, am going to keep things simple. I will offer propositions based upon reading of all of the Salah-related verses in the Mus'haf. Now, as a methodological principle, I am not going to invoke external resources such as dictionaries and ma'ajim and fiqh, etc. for terms that the Qur'an describes itself clearly. The Quranic Lisan is not the Fusha or MSA of today, nor is it the 9th century Banu Abbasid version of Arabic with the Nahf of Sibawe of Farahidi. Once I have offered the propositions, I will present ayat in support of the propositions, and that basically is the evidence that I have behind them. Now, as I open and talk about these ayat, there will be other words and terms as well that further need unpacking. But in order to focus on what we have at task right now, any such words and terms that might lead us away from the topic, I will put under quotation marks to be talked about at a later point in time. And the hope is that at the end of the series, we will end up with a bunch of propositions that we can put together to show a summary, backed by Quranic ayat, of what the Salah is and how it appears and how it is presented within the Qur'an. Right, back to the topic. What is the Salah? Now, first and most important, the term Salah or as Salah in the Qur'an appears with two variations, two variations of spellings. Now, as you can see, this that I'm highlighting is a more common spelling of the term as Salah. But there's another version of this as well, which appears like so. So when we pronounce them, we pronounce them the same way. But when we write them down, they are written differently. Now, both of those different variations of the same term do have slightly different meanings. What those differences are, we'll talk about them as the series progresses. But for now, 
For today, for this particular opening chapter of the series, we are going to stick to this term. So the more common as salah as it appears in the Quran and not the other variation that we will talk about as the series goes on. So what is the as salah in the Quran? Very simply put, it is a two-way connection between entities or parties or associations. It comes from sila between them. Let me repeat that. As salah is a two-way connection between entities. And as evidence of that, and as a manifestation of this as salah in the Quran, we find a lot of variations where different parties begin, initiate and maintain these connections between themselves. For example, in the Quran, we find people as an entity number one doing salah with or upon Allah. Allah does as salah with the people. People do as salah with other people. Munafiqeen, a group, does salah with or upon Allah, entity two. The Nabi does salah upon the people. Allah and the Malaika do salah upon the Prophet. Mushrikeen, even the Mushrikeen in the Mus'haf, do salah upon Allah. So always, as salah in the Quran, when it comes with this particular spelling, is a two-way connection between entities, groups, parties, people. It is really quite simple. And that leads us to our first proposition. As salah is a two-way connection between entities. As evidence, I'll present a few ayat. The first example is of Allah doing as salah with you, with you all. Now that group includes me as well. Allah says, هُوَ الَّذِي يُصَلِّ عَلَيْكُمْ وَمَلَائِكَتُهُ لِيُخْرِجَكُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ وَكَانَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَحِيمًا it is he who reaches out to you and his malaika to bring you out of darknesses, volumat, into the light, nur. And he is ever merciful towards the mu'mineen. Second example is of the salah that is between the mushrikeen and the mu'mineen. فَإِن تَابُوا وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةِ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةِ فَإِخْوَانُكُمْ فِي الدِّينَ وَنُفَصِّلُوا الْآيَاتِ لِقَوْمٍ يَعْلَمُونَ but if they repent, turn around, and aqim the as-salah, and bring parity, then they are your brethren in Allah's deen system. We detail the signs for a people who know. Now this is an example of salah between musallin, people who do salah, and needy people. So this chapter is Surah Al-Ma'un. And it goes something like this. أَرَأَيْتَ الَّذِي يُكَذِّبُ بِالدِّينَ فَذَلِكَ الَّذِي يَدْعُ الْيَتِيمُ وَلَا يَحُدُّ عَلَىٰ طُعَامِ الْمِسْكِينَ فَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ يُرَاءُونَ وَيَمْنَعُونَ الْمَاعُونَ Have you considered him who denies the deen system of Allah? It is he who mistreats the one, a person, entity or country, who has nothing and does not encourage the feeding of the poor. So woe to those who do a salah. Those who are heedless of their salah, those who put on the appearance and withhold the assistance. So in short, this particular chapter, a very short chapter, the musallin are doing as salah or the way they should with those people, other people in the community who are in need. This is as salah between people, a group of people and a group of people. This last example is of as salah between munafiqeen and Allah. Inna al-munafiqeen yukhadi'oon Allah wa huwa khadi'ohum wa idha qamu ila salah qamu kusala yura'oon al-nas wa la yathkuroon Allah illa qalila. The hypocrites try to deceive Allah's system, but his system deceives them. And when they qamu for the as salah, they do so lazily showing off in front of people and emphasizing Allah's message only a little. Let me offer another proposition. As-salah is an abstract noun. It lacks a specific form or any ritualistic aspects. As evidence, as I said before, I'll present Quranic ayat that support this proposition. In the Quran, the opposite of Salah, the one who's doing Salah, is turning away without a mention of a specific way of turning away. For example, this ayah says, or these two ayat say, فَلَا صَدَّقَ وَلَا صَلَّ وَلَكِنْ كَذَّبَ وَتَوَلَّى He neither believed nor did he salah or did the salah, but he denied and turned away. This turning away, tawalla, 
does not actually specify the manner that a person turns away. If you were to do something and you turn away from it, you could take any one of the infinite variations out there that are possible. So you are turning away. That is an abstract concept. That is what you are doing. You are refusing something and you are walking away. Tawalla. But if you were to do the reverse, hence connect, that would be salah. So as salah does not really have a specific form. Not in this particular ayah. Does that hold? Let's look at another ayah. The Quran puts as sabr together with as salah. Just like as sabr or patience or perseverance as we translate it, does not have a specific way or form that applies to all people. As salah also does not have a specific form or shape that applies for all people in all times. وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَإِنَّهَا لَا كَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ And seek help through patience and as salah, two-way connection done the right way. But it is difficult except for the khashi'een, those who acknowledge Allah out of knowledge. So as salah is just like as sabr dependent upon the context, upon the people and the type of connections that we're talking about. The basic concept remains, but this application will be dependent upon the nature of the connections between the types of entities. In other words, no ritualistic standing up in a line and bowing down together and limiting ourselves to a physical set of movements. Let's go to proposition number three for this today's video. Entities, so two different entities, do as salah for different reasons slash objectives. For example, let's see why Allah does as salah to you or to me. Allah, as we said and looked in the previous section, does as salah upon us. Why does He do it? هُوَ الَّذِي يُصَلِّ عَلَيْكُمْ وَمَلَائِكَتُهُ لِيُخْرِجَكُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ It is He who reaches out to you and His malaika to bring you out of darknesses, ظُلُمَات, into the light, the nur. Allah's as-salah upon you, His connections with you, if you were to seek that out, is to take you out of the darknesses that surround your mental faculties, your life, into the light of His knowledge, into His realm. That is the purpose Allah does as salah with you. Nabi Musa had another reason for doing his salah with Allah. Allah said to him, Innani ana Allah la ilaha illa ana fa'budni wa aqim salata li dhikri. I, I am Allah, there is no ilah God but I, so serve me and aqim the salah for my dhikr. So Nabi Musa's version of the as salah with Allah was for the dhikr of Allah. Munafiqeen. Well, why do the munafiqeen do the as -salah? They do the as -salah, nas. They do this salah while they're kusala, while they're lazy, but they still want to show that off to people. So they don't really want to do it. They're forced or they feel obligated to participate. But they limit themselves just to the past that allow others to to see them in a more positive light. So their purpose is not to really connect with Allah, but their purpose is to show as if they are. And this is not a standing up again in a particular line and doing a set of bodily movements that are orchestrated, but to do the connections in whatever system that they're participating in. Proposition number four. When entities do a salah correctly, it stops fahsha wa munkar. Allah says, Utlu ma uhiya ilayka min al kitab wa aqim al salah inna al salata tanha an al fahshai wal munkar wa la dhikrullahi akbar wallahu ya'lamu ma tasna'un. Recite, read out what is revealed to you of the al kitab and aqim the salah. Pay attention to this part. As salah. When you are not the munafiqeen, in other words, you're not just showing off, but you're really forming the connection properly. That as-salah stops excesses, al-fahsha, and evils, the munkar. And the prominence of Allah's system is best, and Allah knows what you devise. It's really quite simple. If the as-salah is done properly, it is meant to stop excesses, and it is meant to stop all of the bad that we see in any system. That is a rule, that is a law given by Allah. With those four propositions, we're going to stop right here. It's the first video of the series, 
So I'm not going to make it very long, nor make it very heavy. But we're going to take a little break, we're going to take stock, summarize things, and set the direction for videos that are to come. So, in that vein, let's summarize the four propositions. Proposition number one, as salah is a two-way connection between entities. Proposition number two, as salah is an abstract noun. It lacks a specific form or ritualistic aspects. Proposition number three, entities do as salah for different reasons slash objectives. Proposition number four, when entities do salah correctly, it stops fahsha in munkar. Now, these propositions that I've presented have another reason, another purpose for existence as well. It is to show the differences between what the Qur'an says about the As-Salah and what we find in our tradition. Let's superimpose these four propositions to start off with what we know and what we see today and see if there are differences or not. I believe that by this way, we can very clearly establish and articulate that the Qur'anic As-Salah is completely and utterly different apologies to all those who hold on to it, than what we find in today's world. Al-Qur'an's As-Salah and today's ritual prayer are two different things. Why? Proposition number one. As-Salah is a two-way connection between entities. But in contrast, today As-Salah has become a ritual prayer full of orchestrated activities that a person does to God as part of a religious obligation. There is no concept of a salah with others, apart from a man doing something as a worship to one entity that is God. That is not the as-salah of the Qur'an. Proposition number two. As-salah is an abstract noun. It lacks a specific form. However, in today's ritual prayer, we have rites and we have rules that are captured in books of namaz of ritual prayer. There literally are books that talk about all the masail and all the detailed minutiae of how to do this, how to do that, where to put your hands, where to put your fingers, where not to look, how to stand, all the sort of possible variations that one could occupy themselves with, we find them all in those books. Hence, the Quranic asala, based on this proposition, does not match what we see today. Proposition number three, entities do as salah for different reasons and objectives. However, again in contrast, today's ritual prayer reduces the Quranic concept to worshipping a deity. That is un-Quranic. Lastly, when entities do as salah correctly, it stops fahsha and munkar. It stops. There's a rule. However, it is ground reality. We all know that. The five times ritual prayer in a mosque does not stop either of these activities. So we've got a conundrum here. Is Allah lying here? Is Allah saying that it should stop, but we see it not getting stopped, hence Allah is lying? Or will we keep on saying, we need to invent more and more better ways of perfecting our physical orchestrations so it meets the definition of the as -salah, so we can have these evil vices go away from our society? What is a more reasonable outcome of that question? I'll leave that to you. So hopefully, the format of the way we're going to go about makes sense. We will cover the Quranic ayat about as -salah and the surrounding words and show why the current ritual prayer namaz is not that Quranic as -salah. Now in this series, just to paint the scene of what's about to come, there are a lot of things to talk about, a lot of things to cover. I'll mention them and we'll continue to address them one by one in shorter videos, more targeted, more focused. For example, why is there no wudu or ritual ablution of body parts in the Qur'an? What is the ruku' of the Qur'an? What is the sajda of the Qur'an? And why do these terms have nothing to do with what we do today in our ritual version of the as -Salah? Why masjid of the Qur'an is not a place of ritual-based worship? What is the difference between the two different variations of as -Salah in the Qur'an? What is the ayah about shortening the prayer when you are in a war actually mean? What is going on there? What is Maqam Ibrahim? What is Musalla? How many ritual prayers are there in the Qur'an? Are there three? Are there two? Are there five? Qur'an does mention Salat al-Fajr and Salat al-Isha. What do they mean? What about Salatul Jumu'ah? Or more properly, Salatul Jumu'ah? And what about the Salatul Janaza? What about the Durood and why there is no Durood in the Qur'an? Or as we also know it as Salat al-Ibrahimiyah, Salla ala Nabi. Why is it not there in the Qur'an? What is salawat, as-salawat? What does that mean in the Qur'an? 
What is a salat al wusta? What is aqimu as salah? What is the meaning of this term? Does it really mean establishing a system? Does it really mean standing up in a straight line for ritual prayer? And also, why is there no aqimu as salawat? Why just the one as salah that we are all to aqimu? Is ritual prayer really a pillar in imad of deen? And to summarize, even though these two topics are outside of the Quran, but I would like to talk about them just for the sake of completeness. There are people and there will be people who will say, but I like doing the physical ritual prayer. I find comfort. I find spiritual connectivity. I really like it. I can't give it up. I like to talk about that as well. And lastly, I think this is a very valid um, concern that some people will bring up. And I used to hold on to that particular um, objection for a long time as well. Muslims have been doing this particular version for such a long time across different countries and across different cultures. How could that be wrong? How could that be made up? How could that not meet what the Quran says about the Asala? So I will also like to cover this topic in this series as well. Last words from me for today. I am a Bashar, a human. This is my faham of the Quran at this point in time. I offer the Quranic ayat as evidence of these propositions based upon how I have understood the Mus'haf. I might make a mistake here and there. Please correct where I do based upon a Quranic ayah and I will listen and correct. However, you and I, both as individuals, we are not meant to follow other humans. Whether it's me or a religious scholar, you should read the Quran yourself. Seek his path freely. Connect with Allah directly through the Al-Quran. Having said that, if there's anything else you also want to talk about, feel free to comment below. I do try and answer all the comments that appear on my videos. And if there are suggestions on any particular topics that I should cover first, or maybe other topics in this concept that I have not introduced or not talked about, please do mention and I will add them so we can have a talk about them. Let's end up with the last ayah for today. Allah says, وَإِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ إِشْمَ أَزَّتْ قُلُوبُ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ وَإِذَا ذُكِرَ الَّذِينَ مِن دُونِهِ إِذَا هُمْ يَسْتَبْشِرُونَ When Allah alone is mentioned, Allah alone, the hearts of those who do not believe in the hereafter shrink with resentment. But when those other than him are mentioned, they become filled with joy. Let's hope we are not part of their group. Until the next part of this series, Salaamu Alaikum.